I could probably do a whole series of videos on how this whole progressive minimalist thing is taking place for me, but I'll kind of give you the backstory. So about three or four years ago, is at this point, is it four years? Probably three and a half years ago, we decided that we were going to sell our primary house, take the money from that and buy a vacation home cash. And we were gonna move into an apartment. And so during that process, I think the first thing that kind of instigated this whole progressing toward minimalism thing is as I was going through my house, I became so painfully aware of how much stuff we had that we didn't use. And I was, I was ashamed, honestly, I was ashamed that we had acquired this mountain of possessions that we felt like we needed as homeowners that we never used. This was most painfully aware, I was most painfully aware of this when we got to our attic. I think a lot of people can relate to this, whether it's an attic or a basement or you know a shed or whatever it is that you have where you keep the stuff where it goes, it's like the island of lost toys, it goes and you never ever use or look at it again. So um, to be fair, um, my husband and I both grew up in poor families where you know, you needed to take care of your stuff because if it broke or you lost it, you weren't necessarily, you weren't gonna get another one. And also there was definitely an appropriate scarcity mentality because things were scarce and times were tough. And so that, sorry about the road noise, but you know, you guys would just have to get over it. So we kind of spent this time, it helped make us very frugal. It helped us make, it helped make us really hard workers because we learned really young that if you wanted something, you had to work really hard for it and that it wasn't just gonna be given to you. And so there's a lot of value and a lot of great lessons that come out of that. But what I found is that it turned into this, I would never have called us hoarder, nobody that knows this would call us hoarders, but it was this pursuit of acquisition. I wish I could go back to my younger self and really hone in on what we needed and what we really valued and had taken all of that money that we invested in those things and put it to better use. Whether we gave that away and donated to organizations that we feel strongly about or if we had put that into retirement accounts. However, hindsight is 2020. So back to the story of the attic. So I go into the attic and I'm looking around and, and to be fair, and I'm gonna throw my husband under the bus a little bit. The attic really wasn't my, my space. It was kind of, actually my husband had like three spaces. He had the attic, the garage and the shed. So if I had all those three things together, don't even get me started. But the attic was the one that I was most aware of. So he was out of town for business or something like that, or actually I think it was a family funeral, irrelevant. And it was my job to go through the attic. And as I'm looking around, I am realizing that at least 90% of the things that are in this attic, we have not used or needed in the last 16 years. And I suddenly became almost angry about it. And then I started realizing like, there's cardboard boxes in here of items that we don't even own anymore. And so I started this, I'm not gonna lie, angry purge. So I started, and it was a walk-in attic, so I started putting everything in my son's room and they were bringing it down to a trailer. Now, in hindsight, part of my punishment, my penance, if you will, for my inappropriate consumption is I should have done more of what's called unbuying, which is finding a home for something that is actually needed and wanted by someone as opposed to just donating it. Because painfully, about 75% of what you donate still ends up in a landfill. And that's the other component of the waste. So, however, at the time, one, I didn't know that, and two, I, that's not where my mental state was. So I went through this attic, and I'm not exaggerating, at least 90% of it went to a donation center. And mostly one that I really like to support, but a couple total. And so this process prompted me to start looking at my house and everything else really critically. And I realized, so then I went to my kitchen and I pulled everything out of my entire kitchen and I laid it all out on the floor. And again, I realized at least half of these item, items I hadn't used maybe ever, but certainly not for a very, very long time. And so the purge went there. And then I went to my closet and you know, I don't think any of my friends would have told me that I had an unreasonable wardrobe, but compared to what I own now, I probably own Oh my gosh, I don't even, I'm gonna say 10 to 20% of what I owned then. Let's put it this way. 
I had 65 pairs of shoes. Now, to be fair, I still like shoes, but I have, I think, eight or nine pairs of shoes. So what is that? 85% purge of my shoes? Same thing with the clothes. And that's when I started to realize, okay, either I need to find a friend that wants them, I need to consign them, whatever. And I started doing more of that. And then this continued on to even things like our paperwork. Oh my gosh. We had paperwork of things that we could get online from like 20 years prior. It was insane. Now I know you got to keep your W-2s and stuff like that, but utility bills, even if I didn't have access to those online, I would only need a few years of those. Every single credit card statement we had ever had. And that's a whole nother funny story for another day. So this process continued. And then when we moved into our house, so we moved into an apartment and then we had another house. It was a small house and all I did was cannibalize from the other house. I didn't buy anything new except for a couple of um, sets of sheets. I think that was it. Mm, and a used table, because we only had one, and one bed. Everything else was either given to us or we already had. So that was a step in the right direction. So fast forward, we move into you know, another, another apartment. And now we have moved every year for the last three years. And every single time I feel this overwhelming urge to purge. And I have this ongoing process. I mean, I mean, honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I end up living out of a suitcase at some point, because there's just, I'm so painfully aware of how much time and energy and money and waste goes into owning all of these things. So at this point, almost four years later in this sort of progressive minimalist journey, I still have a ton of stuff. We've since sold that second home and everything that is in it. And this time I was much more pleased with how we did it. We, we gave most of it away. And I think it's sometimes hard for people to receive things like that. They feel guilty, but I would much rather give it to someone that really wants it and can use it than to donate it and worry that it might ultimately end up in a landfill. And not that those organizations aren't great, they're great and they're all doing good things. So I'm happy to support them, but I would also like to support my friends and family. And so this process continues. So maybe I'll give some more videos and examples of, of what we did from multiple perspectives, financially, um, sustainably, although sustainability is something that I valued for a long, long time. I've probably been working on that for 20 years and I, I think that would be a valuable video for people to see and you know just material possessions and what is that where does that all come from and why does it matter to me now and how has that changed things for me but ultimately i thought i'd just give you a quick little snippet into the i like to call it my progressive minimalist lifestyle and things that i've been working on 